Hi and welcome to my channel. So this video is going to be about um, what I'm going to pack in my surgery bag for my double mastectomy reconstruction. So my surgery is tomorrow. I've been researching what to pack in my bag and uh, I'm going to go through exactly what I'm packing and kind of reasons for it. There are some items that I'm probably not going to go over, things like socks and pants and that sort of thing, which uh, a bit of a given. Um, but there are some specific things that I need to pack um, because of the type of surgery that I'm having. So just a bit of background, I am having a um, skin sparing, nipple sparing, double mastectomy um, with immediate reconstruction using round implants and they're going over my muscle, um, which I've requested because I'm quite um, a fitness freak. Um, and I'm quite keen to get back in the gym as soon as possible so my plastic surgeon actually said that he recommended I go over the muscle so that's what I'm doing um, so that's happening tomorrow morning um, and there's certain things that I won't be able to do so because of the surgery they're going to cut under here they're also taking four lymph nodes from my right hand side and the cancer that's still there the cancer's on the chest wall so they're going to be taking some of the muscle at the back and stitching that back together Mm, nice. Um, so I'm going to have quite a lot of restrictions on this side especially, um, but in general I won't be able to lift my arms above uh, my shoulder height. Um, for the first few days I'm going to be stuck kind of in this position, um, very much limited in my mobility. Um, there'll be quite a bit of pain. I'm going to have two sets of drains either side, so hopefully mm -hmm. one set will come out before I leave the hospital. And then I will have another set. Um, so there are going to be certain restrictions around here. There's going to be a lot of uh, pain. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. It's got to be done though. So I'm trying to think what to do first. Okay. So what I'm going to pack. So I've got my pants. I've got my socks. I've got my makeup bag for when I get out the day I get discharged because I'm not allowed to wear any makeup tomorrow which I'm very upset about because I'm not going to look like me. <laughs> um, other things that I'm going to pack because I can't eat from 10 o'clock tonight so I've got to be in hospital for 7 o'clock in the morning hopefully my surgery is going to be first so I'm going to be at 9 o'clock in the morning so the first thing I have to have done um, is an ultrasound and an injection into my well, you don't want to know. Um, and then I'm going to go into the surgery. So I can't have anything to eat from 10 o'clock tonight. I can only drink tea and uh, coloured liquids until 2 o'clock in the morning. And I can only have water until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So the first thing I'm going to pack is a bottle of water. Um, and I'm going to pack something that I can grab quite quickly. So my sister gave me some nice small chocolate bars. Who doesn't love chocolate bars when they're feeling a bit poorly? And I've got some Belvita biscuits, um, which are easy to open, hopefully. I might be a bit ambitious with those. Um, I'm also going to take some um, kind of nuts and uh, maybe some pe pre-peeled fruit, just in a box that I can just fetch out my bag and have those ready so I don't have to fiddle with stuff, with packets and that sort of thing. So that's the first thing. Um, my water bottle, I'm going to keep that. It's got a um, straw, so my gym water bottle, which I haven't packed yet because I'm going to the gym later. Um, so that's going to be ideal for when I'm in hospital and I can't lift my arms. So I'm going to have my bottle here so I can just drink out the straw. So that's tip number one. <laughs> Remember that. The next thing I'm going to pack is some pyjamas. So obviously I'm going to wake up in uh, a surgical gown. So I've got some just very, these are kind of old leggings that I've got. So what you want is uh, pyjama bottoms that are very easy to pull up or trousers that are very easy to pull up. So you don't want to have to struggle with that because in fact, I think you're probably not going to be able to get things up off the floor really. So I've got some very old leggings. I've also got a spare pair of pyjama bottoms just in case. You never know. The other thing, and I had to go specifically shopping for this, is a pyjama top, but a pyjama top with buttons all the way down the front. Do you know how difficult that was to find these? So I just got these from Primark, £3 in the sale, bargain. There's a reason why they don't sell very many of them, because obviously people don't want to buy them. 
um, and that goes all the way down and it's quite baggy as well because I'm going to wake up I'm going to be quite swollen I'm going to have these drains in they're going to be um, initially they're going to be um, they're going to be stuck to me somehow I don't know the nurse did explain it but you know um, so you need a bit of extra space okay so I've got two of these tops ready to go so that's my pajama tops the other thing that I have had, and actually I had these made by a lovely lady off one of my Facebook groups, um, and it's a drain bag. So it's just a very small, soft bag. You can buy these off any place. This, so the lady that did it for me, she just asked me to pay for postage because this, she's actually going through breast care, cancer treatment at the moment, and it keeps her busy. She likes to sew, so so it's so sweet of her. So I've got a little drain bag. So what that will do is, and it's a bit too long at the moment, Create around your neck and you're going to put your drains in it. So for the day that I leave hospital, I'm going to need somewhere to put my drains. So that would go there. I'm going to have to knot it at the back. Um, but I thought I'd leave that until I know how long my drains are. Okay, so drain bag. Um, the other thing that I've had made is one of these pillows. So it's the same lady that made these, the drain bag. Um, and they're just heart pillows. They're my booby pillows. So I've got two of these. So... I'm not quite sure how I'm going to how I'm going to do it. So it's either I think under the arm or under the boob, or um, for when I go home in the car. So that's another thing. You need a pillow for the car, okay? Because your seatbelt is going to come down across you, and it's going to press on your chest. So you need something to kind of cushion that. So whether it's one of these, whether it's just a normal pillow or a V pillow, um, any of these, okay? So keep that. So I've got two of those, and they're so soft, they're lovely. The other thing that I've been advised um, is kind of my toiletries bag. So I've got, in my toiletry bag, I've got tissues, always an essential. I've got um, some body cream for when I kind of get out, because I can't wear body cream tomorrow because of the surgery, risk of bacteria. I've got some face wipes, so I can't have a bath or a shower, I think, for a fair few weeks. Mm. and I can't wear um, deodorant either so I've got some nice um, these are actually sensitive pure ones for the first few days just because I'm worried about sort of risk of infection that sort of thing but I will probably once I'm a bit more healed I'll use some perfumed ones just to help those around me more than anything the smell nice um, I've got my face cream so I've just got a little pot of that I've got my lip balm um, so I use Carmex, which I think is a godsend. So I need that if I've got dry lips. Especially after you're anaesthetic, you're going to be quite dry around your face and your lips. Um, and I think when you wake up, you're quite thirsty as well. Got a dry mouth. The other thing... I'm talking to all the girls, so if there's any men out there, I'm sorry. Um, sanitary pads. Now, since finishing chemo, this might be too much information, but I don't care. Um, since... Going through chemo, I think I'm pretty sure I'm in early menopause because my ovaries have shut down if the hot flashes and night sweats are anything to go by. However, when I was in with the flu, I was talking to a really lovely cancer nurse. Um, I can't remember her name. And she was absolutely brilliant. And I was um, just talking to her and she said, just be prepared for your surgery. She said, not always, not even often, but she said some women come out of surgery and the anaesthetic can set off uh, kind of your endocrine system and your hormones um, so some women come out of surgery and they're on their period and then it's just a whole I mean obviously they're gonna have sanitary pads in the hospital but I thought I'd better be prepared so I've got some sanitary pads just in case okay I've got something to read so I've got my book which is a bit hard going it's by the Dalai Lama the art of happiness and then I've got some really trashy mags that my sister bought me. So that was probably what I'm going to be reading as opposed to the Dalai Lama. And the last thing I've got is a really lovely front fastening sports bra. So this is high impact. Um, front fastening um, in hearing aid beige. Mmm, nice. Isn't that attractive? Lovely. Um, it's important that they're front fastening because you're not going to be able to put anything over your head. Um, and also you need something supportive and you need something that's not underwired. 
okay because you're going to have your scar tissue here. I'm actually going to wake up in a bra. The hospital give me one. Um, so you might want to just check what the thing, the protocol is with your uh, medical team um, and find out what's going on with your surgery. Um, but I've got a spare one just in case. Um, and all I've done is I'm um, a certain size, so I've gone up by back size. I'm a 32, so I've gone up for a 34 in the same uh, cup size. Sadly, I'm not going to know what bra size I am um, until the end of the surgery because the surgeon's just going to fit whichever implant he can get in. So we're hoping for some Jordans. Might end up flat. Who knows? Um... So I don't know what size I'm going to be until afterwards and even then because of the swelling I'm going to be a lot bigger than I uh, will settle down to after about a month or two. Um, so I'll probably be wearing a bigger size than I actually need for a few weeks. So that's all I'm going to pack in my surgery bag. Um, I'm going to be wearing the clothes that I'm going to come home in. So I'm going to pick my clothes very carefully. So I'm going to pick probably some very loose jeans or some jogging bottoms um, and a button down shirt or maybe a hoodie. Um, certainly nothing that I'm gonna have to put over my head because obviously you can't put anything over your head to get your arms through. Um, and some slip on shoes probably or some trainers, something really comfy. Um, hopefully I'm gonna have someone there to help me get dressed before I come home. Um, and that's about it. So fingers crossed for my surgery tomorrow. I'm sure I'm going to be fine. Um, ticking it off. So I'm almost two ticks through the three to get. And then I've beat cancer. <laughs> so um, any questions, pop them in the comments below. Um, if you've liked this video, then please like and subscribe. Um, and I will be doing a video that documents all of my double mastectomy journey. So that will be coming out probably about a month after my surgery. So we're looking at the end of April. So keep an eye out for that and I will see you soon. Bye.